Um, so my question is, so, so we're trying to attract like the Alex's of the future to the uh -huh. Institute. So I want you to give a pitch. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, in a sense, I want to ask you what, what the, what was the value you got from spending those years um, at the Institute? What would you say to somebody young who's thinking of being uh, an intellectual in the future, public intellectual versus an academic, in terms of the value of spending time at the Institute? Well, I think first, and the Institute has some obligation, or the, the first you need to view uh, using objectivism in an intellectual career as something that's exciting, that's going to allow you to be innovative. So yeah. when, I'm, when I'm talking to the next me, so to speak, I'm thinking of someone who's, who's ambitious and, and thinks of an intellectual career as something exciting versus sometimes I think people think of it as, well, Ayn Rand was so amazing. And so I'm just going to dutifully teach some part of her to other people. And that's just my job. And I'm a foot soldier. And th that is never yep. maybe caricature, but it hasn't resonated with me. And I don't think it'll resonate with really smart kids. So when I'm talking to someone, and I think when the Institute is talking to somebody, it should be, this is, this is going to be really exciting for your life in terms of how you get to use your mind. And also there's a, there's a definite potential that you'll get rewarded for it, that a lot of people will think that what you've done is tremendously useful to them and that they'll, you'll get paid in, in different ways. So it'll all integrate. So A, there has to be that potential. And then B, once you recognize that potential, the question is, well, what, what do you need? And part of what you need, which the Institute doesn't currently specialize in, but, but may in the future have programs that I may help them with this, but is, is understanding, um, in the most fundamental sense, intellectual marketing. And, and I mean marketing in the deepest sense, not just random advertising, but I mean understanding what audience you're creating value for and exactly how. And I think the key there is, in, in everything that I think of at least, is what you're really taking is you're taking some aspect of life that is really crucial and complex and concerning to people and you're offering clarity you're really offering clarity in the way that people really, really uh, want it. So I think anything you're doing intellectually, even if you're a professor or whatever, you should really be thinking of, okay, what's the crucial, complex, concerning issue in life where I can offer clarity? And then, so that's the marketing piece of it. And then there's the question of, well, what's your, to be really cliche and annoying, secret sauce? Like, how are you going to do it? And what objectivism provides you is it provides you uh, really a, a set of methods by which you can achieve, you can bring clarity to that field, assuming you're familiar with, the, you become familiar with the facts yeah. in a way that nothing else, uh, nothing else can, because we just hit concepts. You have guidelines for how to formulate concepts. Clearly you understand fallacies like the package deal, which is super common. You've just got something where when you explain something, it's going to be so illuminating to somebody because it's so, it's so clear. If, if you really, understand and practice the objectivist methodology and it's really a habit and so a lot of people here i'm sure have seen uh Ankar Gatte sometimes in, in q a's in particular and you'll see there's some issue and everybody is kind of a little bit foggy and then he'll just say something and it's like, oh wow that is that is amazing and you should be able to within the limits of your ability that that's the kind of thing you should bring when you talk yep. people are going to expect it's like the light is coming in to the room there, there's so much about objectivist methodology that can help you clarify important issues. And then that means you have to understand it and then you have to have practice applying it. And in that case, it's good to have expert teaching to understand it. It's good to have expert mentoring to apply it. And so in my case, it was, per a lot of people were valuable, but um, particularly I think on the, I mean, Ankar was the most in yeah. terms of just helping me even arrive at a lot of the concepts that I, that I still, use today and, and it's scary to think with some of them because I, I remember the conversation where i learned it like oh what's the fallacy of renewable energy why well, that's an invalid term it's like well i hope i would have figured that at some point i definitely yeah. wouldn't have figured out earlier because i didn't so there's that kind of thing people can accelerate particularly if you're a really good philosopher who's who's like really good at at having insights even if they don't have full expertise and that's a rare thing to get but but if you can get that that's great. So they can help you develop your ideas. And then just your own application, it's like any other skill. It's hard to fully edit yourself in, in developing it. So certainly in terms of my relationship with you, one thing that was, was very valuable was just you looking at my concrete work product and saying, this isn't good for this reason. This isn't good for that reason. 
this is not going to be convincing to anybody. Nobody's going to be interesting. And I remember there's one thing that probably people still remember where I wrote something on energy independence and you just trashed it in an editorial meeting. And it was just, it, it, but it was right. I mean, it was just kind of a machine gun of this is why nobody's going to be interested. It's not clear. You don't have a focus. And just to show people how much I've evolved and, and certain parts of it I got at the Institute uh, were, I mean, I remember we were once talking about an article and I said, hey, I want to write an article. And, and they said, well, where are you going to publish it? And I remember I, I kind of resented that because I just wanted to write the article. And if you know me now, I run a poor yeah. product company. I never think this way. but, but Exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then I think Ankar, and I said, well, I don't know. And then Ankar said, well, it's at least worth considering that if you can't find a place to publish it that has an audience, maybe you shouldn't write it. And <laughs> that bothered me, but it, it made a certain amount of, of sense. That's just a sense in which you can see that people are, uh, that, that a lot of development can happen. So I, I think I'm as result oriented as almost any intellectual now, but, but yeah. at the time yeah. I wasn't. So then I think that working to the extent the Institute is really having really top experts at objectivist methodology teach you, and then people who have really good sense of communication help mentor you, then that's, that's good. So then that's, that's the obligation of the Institute to really make sure that happens. And then, yeah. and then, to make sure that the brightest people get that access and to make sure they communicate to the world that there's this very exciting possibility. Yeah, I mean, that's part of our marketing challenge is to, is to communicate that exciting possibility out there. So